Hello, this is Ryan Lester. Uh, I work with Bold360 here at Venture Beat Transform. Uh, it's our second day of the event. Uh, it's been a really outstanding day. A lot of great presentations, a lot of really great uh, content. Uh, and joining me is Ambreen. Uh, welcome. Hey. Great to have you Thank here. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> you presented yesterday, a lot of great energy out of your presentation and, and the topic area. So really excited to talk a little bit more today. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so let's start off about your role. Uh, you work for Planned Parenthood. Could you talk a little bit about what you do at Planned Parenthood? Sure. Um, so I'm the senior director of digital products in our, in our digital products lab. Um, and essentially the mission for the lab is to basically innovate um, using a lot of the core mission that we have in the organization. So we um, focus on one of three objectives um, in particular. In the lab, we focus on two out of the three. So one is around positive health outcomes around sexual and reproductive health, and that's with our period tracking app spot on. And um, the second one, which is only five months old, is the pillar of um, bringing free and accurate sex education to everyone in the United States and beyond. Um, and that's where Rue, our chatbot, comes into play. Awesome. Yeah. It's yeah, really exciting. It's also interesting, too, how uh, I think you know, you're working with a very broad base of you know, very young people, you know, yes. tweens and, and <laughs> teenagers, but then also people that are more mature. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, too, how you, it feels like you're having different ways of engaging, engaging different types of that audience, where some people it's maybe more of an app and there's like a little bit more formality, and some it's more people just want to make it easy and approachable. Yeah. So talk a little bit about kind of how you think about how you engage with that audience and how it's so diverse. Sure. Um, well, fortunately for both of the products that I oversee, they are catering to a younger demographic and that those are our most active users. Great. Um, and what we do is essentially take the core mission of, um, you know, providing care no matter what to providing care no matter what, when, or how. Yes. Um, and what we do is basically what a lot of people are echoing in the conference today is understanding where their consumption habits are or what they're doing to get either information or um, wanting to put in information. Um, and so we're, we're spending a lot of time on the digital space because that's where the younger audience seem to be. Yep. Um, and we're making it an experience where it doesn't seem intrusive, too much like a PSA, but yes. very natural. Um, and in very subtle ways too. Yes, so, yeah, and, it's and that's the challenge. <laughs> totally, and kids are like, to they're, they're very much, they're very in tune yeah. to like, what's real and true and approachable and what's kind of that like formal adult, you know, yes. like it's, they don't, yes. want, they don't want to be talking to their parents in this experience. They want to be talking to someone that's approachable and knows them and, and kind of uh, talks in the way they talk. Right, yeah, I mean, we talk about this a lot at Planned Parenthood, especially for Rue, where we want to get um, medically accurate um, and evidence-based education to the younger audience, but we want to do it in a way where it's not sounding like we're in a lab coat. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally right. But also not completely sounding like we're 12 and we don't know what we're saying. Agreed, so like you want to use the right words. The and, happy and medium of exactly both. Right, exactly right, exactly um, right. So it doesn't feel like they're talking to their doctor per se, but that yeah. they're not talking to you know uh, uh, an uninformed uh, uh, audience or an uninformed uh, person. Yeah. It's more like a cool ant. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. a great definition. So, uh, so I really enjoyed. The, there was an article they just wrote up on you on Venture Beat, and it talked a lot about the stuff you're doing with Rue. Mm -hmm. So to start out, I think it'd be great to talk about um, why you looked at like conversational AI and why a conversational bot was something you explored, and talk a little bit more about Rue. Sure. Um, so we came up with the conversational concept of Rue, um, where we we really weren't focused on the technology aspect first. We were actually figuring out and looking at the problem at stake, which is um, in the United States, there are only 24 states that mandate sex education. Wow. Only 13 require sex, those um, sex edu education courses to be medically accurate. Wow. Um, and in the absence of that, a lot of teenagers, 84% we found in our research, are looking up information online. Um, which is great. They're they're asking questions and they're doing that. But the trouble with that is that there's a lot of misinformation yeah, online. Absolutely. Um, so what we're starting to do is um, pay attention and observe their habits. We were looking at the the actual issue at stake, which is, well, we can't change um, the state policies at present, but we can observe the, these habits and see if we can bring it into their day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, or even take base best practices from each of those states of what's working really well right. and how we make that a lot more approachable and consumable. Right, um, and we do this by, well, we, we provide sex education um, at a lot of our affiliates and health centers provide that to um, local schools and after-school programs. But in, 
in, um, on top of that, or in addition to that, what we started to do is observe teenagers. How were they looking up these questions? What yes. were they asking? What were the answers that were they were getting? Um, and we were seeing that a lot of um, teenagers were going on on Google, they were going on YouTube, they were participating in forums. Oftentimes they asked their friends. Um, oftentimes they also asked their parents, which we encourage. We think that's a very healthy thing to do, to yep. have a great an open relationship with your parents. Um, but there was always this um, sort of barrier where they either were a little too embarrassed to ask the true question they wanted to ask. Yes. Um, and whether that be with their friends or their family or sometimes actually even on the internet, right? So they were um, a little nervous that if, um, uh, one particular example I know, I was talking to a teen teenager and he was very cognizant of typing in particular questions because he was like, I know that Google stores that history and if it comes up and yeah. autocorrect, I don't expose myself. Yes. Um, so that sort of careful, cautious behavior was really enticing to us. Um, so what we did is we tried to look at ways, observe their habits, the fact that they're on mobile all the time, they're online all the time, yep. um, and figure out a way to make it safe and secure. And we did a series of experiments, and that's where AI came into play, where we were like, what if we like trained um, someone to speak with them via text? They also spend, they check their text messages maybe like 75 to 95 times a day. You yeah, know, wow. like they're constantly, yeah, they're constantly there. Checking, yeah. um, and so we thought of that idea, again, through like a lot of observational behavior. Um, and that's where, you know, a chatbot came to mind. It's like, what if someone were to be able to text someone, but anonymously, right? Yes. So like that that barrier of entry and that. Yeah, there's not, we, like, we know there's not a human on the other end right. where we're sending them the message and we're like, oh, like now yeah. this person, right. now, I'm back, now I'm back to the doctor's office. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I'm not in person, but I know there's still someone at the other end who's like going to be judging me or yeah. going to be like. So, Precisely. So, so yeah, so it's like that you're using the medium they're comfortable with but you're doing it in this really kind of anonymous and very uh, non-intrusive way. Absolutely, and um, what was great is what we found is different to um, talking to someone, whether that even be on text exchange. The fact that they were engaging with the chatbot lowered their fears and they were able to open up very quickly. Yes. Um, so they, they knew that this was a non-judgmental safe zone, they could ask something. And the fact that we went so far as to tell them, by the way, we're not actually capturing. Yeah, like nothing like, here is being recorded. Or yeah. Um, well, w there's nothing that will identify. To them. Yeah. yeah sure, sure <laughs> um, yeah. So we do have to analyze the data. Yeah, so. yeah, sure, sure. Um, but we don't capture the fact that this would lead back to a specific person asking this question. I think that also brought in an element of just trust um, in a way that was that was incredible to see and it was almost instant where like that sort of gratification was there. Also what was interesting in the first few months when we launched Rue, there were a lot of errors of course, right? We, we had not trained it enough um, and what we were finding is a lot of teenagers were really patient with Rue. They were like, I know you can't answer it, I'm gonna answer it in another way, I'll, pu I'll put it in as a search query, I won't ask the full question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were, they were very, like adapting. They were adapting, they, they were very patient. It. Yeah, because yeah. they just really wanted the answer. Yes. Um, so it was great to see that, um, you know, fast forward a, a year and a half later and five months into our launch, we are advanced enough where we can have someone ask a question and we, we would be able to answer and they could ask it a multitude of ways. Yep. Um, but it was great to see like the, the sort of interaction and the engagement that happened almost instantaneously. And I think the best part was AI happened to be a solution to the conversation, but it wasn't like going into the you didn't conversation. You started as that. You weren't right. like, oh, this is an AI project. It was like, let's more do this cool, shiny new product. Totally. Um, but it ended up being the absolute right solution for us. That's so, great. Yeah. yeah. There, there's, there's, um, in many parts of uh, society or life, there's like things that are the like areas that are underinvested. Um, and I do a weekly uh, AI podcast, and there's a, another oh, a bot out there called Wobot. Yes. Which is, yeah. you know, it, Wobot? Yeah, yeah. We um, um, look at it almost as competitive analysis and we compare it all the time. Yeah, and it's yeah. like great about these areas about mental health and mm -hmm. sexual health and personal health. And there's all these things where, like, um, you know, there's a lot of good research around how, like, daily behavior is really important and mm -hmm. making information accessible, and also that things are a journey. 
And one thing I really get excited about with what you're, what you're doing with this conversational mm -hmm. experience is that it's not just like, oh, I'm gonna ask one question and get one answer. It's like, well, by asking that question, we also think these other things may be interesting and relevant to you. Do you wanna talk about those more? Mm -hmm. and, and I think both of what you're doing and what Wobot's doing is that it gives that invitation to the user mm -hmm. to say, you asked me about this, here's some other related things. Do you wanna talk about those? Right. And it's a great way to really start a dialogue Whereas when someone searches something on WebMD or on Google, it's typically looking, they just get a pointed answer and then right. they kind of are done. Right, right. Um, and so there's really this great opportunity in this conversational experience to start that exchange mm -hmm. and really start the dialogue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there's also a, just a breadth of opportunity for us to actually help them make decisions too, right? Like um, involve them in decision-making trees, whether yes. there's popular questions people ask, like what's the right, birth control method for me yes. or, um, and that's not a, just a binary yeah, answer, it's like, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's something that we have to like foster the conversation with a little bit um, and advance it to a point where through a series of questions, we can actually give them the most accurate answer too. Um, yeah, and I agree, Wilbot does a great job. That's sort of where, um, in a different way, that is very similar to where we're wanting to go as well yes. with Roo, um, that's awesome. to make it, um, and a, a flow that's so conversational that we can help you make decisions about um, your personal life. Yeah, exactly, or at least make more informed decisions. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's great, that's great. And so you said now this has been out for five months, and mm -hmm. I know you've been doing additional updates to it. What are some of the exciting things that have come out of it, whether it's feedback once again from yeah. users or just what you're seeing and some ahas that have come out of this early Just period. so much, so much. Yeah, sure. um, but I will say, I think the five themes there's five themes around like topics that are very popular, but I think the the ones that have been surprising is there's quite a bit of information um, where people are asking about um, the topic of consent. So oh, interesting. Um, I think teenagers are asking a lot around what's the right way to ask someone yes. out, what's the right way to progress their relationship with someone, um, and I think it stems from a lot of the movement that's happening in the media, right? Yeah, absolutely. People are very careful about what they're doing, what they want to do. Um, and trying to figure out how they express themselves. That's a themselves. great way to do it. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think that's been fascinating to see yeah, that's great. Um, the impact of that in a positive way, right? Um, they're recognizing what's not okay and they want to make it right. And yes. they're interested in, in figuring out how to solve the problem, um, which I think is great uh, and a really great surprise to see. I think the other thing that's been really fascinating is a lot of, um, a lot of teenagers ask us about values and judgment. Um, so, for example, they ask, is it okay if, or do you think it's normal that? Yes. Um, they're just wanting validation that the decisions they make are okay or normal, right? Um, and I mentioned this in my presentation. I think a theme that is pretty omnipresent um, throughout a lot of these conversations is they're just trying to figure out, this is the spectrum of normalcy. Yeah, like these are my, these are my, like, bound, these are yeah. my guardrails. <laughs> where, do like, sit, where do I you sit? Know? Yes. Um, and sometimes someone wants to be front and center. Some, sometimes they, they're fine to be a little bit more experimental, but like, can they be normal within that experimental? Yes. Um, so I think that's very fascinating, and that's um, you know that's not unlike any other teenager. When I was a teenager, the adjective of being normal is like all I obsessed about. You know, yes, it's, it's something that totally. was very important to me. Um, with with the addition of being expressive and creative too. Yes. But there was this something, there was something about um, wanting to know that you're okay or normal that yes. was very important, and I think that. Um, you can infer from the questions that are being asked that that's the sort of validation that a lot of teenagers are looking for. Um, I think there's just, I think there's a lot um, that go back and forth around, in, in, in the similar aspect of values and judgments, around how to communicate with your community. So whether it's to say, um, how do I talk to my parents about something? Yeah, yeah, something? that's good, yes. Um, and sometimes we get parents actually talking to Rue and say, how do I talk to my kid about, you know? <laughs> totally. Um, so, I think that's great too. I think everyone is trying to figure out how to talk about this yes. um, in a meaningful, healthy, and accurate way, which is, that's what we're after, right? Yeah, totally. So it's great. Um, so those are things that are quite surprising. I, going into it, we were expecting, you know, the normal questions that people ask on like the Cosmo quizzes that you see, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, but <laughs> it's, it's much more meaningful that we're seeing and that's promising. And I think that's great. Um, and it makes me a little proud of, the, the teens to be so proactive and mature yes. and want to make these um, smart choices. So it's yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting too, we, we use this term about like taking an outside in or an inside out approach. Mm -hmm. And too often we take like an inside out approach where we're like, well, these are the topics people are going to want to cover. And like, right. of course they are. This is what we've always covered. Yeah. But then when you do something like this, you start to say, well, from the outside in, there's all these 
things that people actually do want to explore and that you can create a lot of value around. And, right. and for you guys, it's really about building that relationship and that trust. Absolutely. And so the more, it's one thing, the more ways you're servicing them and your audience, the more they're going to come back, the more they're going to engage, the more they're, yeah, you can create more value for them. Right. Uh, it's such really powerful. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing that's really interesting about teens engaging with Rue too is they test Rue. They're always like, "What's your how? What's your last name? <laughs> like, <laughs> are you seeing that's anyone?" Or things like that, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, and we train yeah. Rue to yeah, answer yeah, those tests, questions. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Um, but it, it's it's some it's another way that we developed um, and put a lot of thought into the training to make a user feel like. We're listening to you, and Rue is actually someone that you can like actually have a conversation with, right? Yeah, and the answers are fun. playful, of course, totally. but yeah, it humanizes it and it builds a little bit of trust in a playful way. Uh, but that's also another aspect where we have a little fun with it too, and we're like, oh, this is surprising. These are not bad questions. We should answer them, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, a lot of things are like about uh, there's the technology and there's like the, the content, but then it's also the art of it and like the yes. theatrics. And mm -hmm. there's a really great um, program that came out at MIT around Scratch, which is a programming language for young children. Oh, cool. And like at first when they made it, it was like building blocks and it was like, okay, but then they started to make it more um, outcome oriented. So it's like, if you do these things, you can create a little like uh, mm -hmm. uh, rabbit that dances on the screen. Right. And so it's like a fun, like, your game it and making it like approachable and engaging, but at the same time you're teaching them something. And mm -hmm. I think when you can strike that balance, especially with young children and teenagers, it's, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the challenge with, um, and I also mentioned this in my presentation too, the challenge with Rue is it's, it's just a text exchange, right? Like our product yeah. is really words. And so there's very few limited, we actually don't want to make it seem or strip the sort of interface of a text exchange by any means, but we do want to create like a, a personality and yes. set a tone. Um, and we do that in very subtle ways. So Rue, for instance, is an avatar um, and it, it starts coming to life in specific ways. So if you ask a question about, um, am I doing this right? It'll like give you a thumbs up yeah. or it'll celebrate with you. Yeah, um, the confetti. Yeah, like you guys yeah. do a lot of those fun. <laughs> there's a lot of confetti. Like little moments yeah. Yeah, that are fun. Um, yeah, and if, it take, if you take a little bit of time to respond, Rue starts like snoring and you know, yeah. there's some Zs that appear. So it's basically saying like, I acknowledge you're here and I just want to make sure that like, you know, I'm paying attention if-, if Exactly. You know, um, so I think that's been, those subtle nuances really make a difference for a teenager. They're very, um, well, they're tech savvy, right? Like yes. they know what's going on. And so when they see some something unique and playful like that, they grasp onto it very quickly and like enjoy that moment. Well, and it's interesting too, how um, you can do very little things like that. Like, you know, like you probably saying you have a catalog of like 10 of those things, those little <laughs> like, you know, um, animated emotions. Right. Um, and, and if you put that little bit of time in, it just feels much more to the user, like, wow, they yeah. care. They're like, they, they didn't just throw this together and, you know, right. uh, put a minimal effort and they really made this something that's delightful and enjoyable. And yeah, Rue's expressive, right? It's not just like a, just a static exchange between, even though the conversation itself is dynamic, it's not like a dynamic um, back and forth, but like Rue's actually like participating and like emoting in some ways of the conversation. So yeah. it's great. And I think it's interesting too, as the industry goes forward, where you have these now conversational experiences and they build a life of their own and they have a tone and a personality, right. but they're, they're your brand. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like this interesting balance of, uh, you know, I think people th would think about this as like, they'd have like a, um, a caricature that would represent mm -hmm. their brand, like the Energizer Bunny. Right. Um, and then people think of that, but now I think it's extending into this conversational experience where how are you representing your brand? What's the tone? How does it feel? Yeah. Um, is it very straightforward and direct? Is it more, and, and it may even change too, if you had a, you know, not relevant to you guys, but if you have a support page, that's more, you know, I have a problem with my product. Mm -hmm. That's different than, hey, The welcome. tone is different, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think what's interesting too, uh, speaking of tone, is the sort of the right balance of, so we have someone in-house that trains Rue on what to say and how to say it, and that's mostly on the emphasis of being like, humanizing and approachable. And then we have a second layer where we make sure what Rue says is medically accurate. And it goes back to what we were talking about initially, which is like, what's that fine balance of making sure someone is enjoying the conversation, but like not talking to someone in a white lab, yeah. you yes, know? Yes, yes. Um, so tone is just, we spend a lot of time on it and it's That's so great. important. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's important in the design and of course, in like the conversation itself too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's something I think that at first you probably don't think about it as much and then yeah. it really comes to you as you're starting to put it out there. It's so important for us, yeah. That's great. Agreed. 
So I know we were just talking earlier, you had a big release today, so that was exciting. <laughs> Um, and, and so I know our team, the, the team at Bullet 360, really loves working with your team. And you know, Likewise. <laughs> we, 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 wherever we can, we highlight the, this, the great work you, you guys have done. I guess, how, how's it been working with a partner and what are some of the advantages of working with a partner and do you, you know, in what ways do you think it's helped you? Because I think a lot of companies are struggling with, how do I do this? Do I hire people? Do I build it all myself? Right. So how did you look at working with a partner? This is awesome. This is an awesome question. Um, because I've been thinking about it a lot as I see other people's conversations and how they've built out their teams and how they're using AI in general. I think for us, we feel like um, we came into this product in the same way that we approached it from the very beginning, which is like, we're not tech experts. Mm -hmm. We're actually here to move sex education forward. Yep. We're here to innovate that field. Um, and then, you know, just owning that owning to that moment where we're never going to have um, the opportunity to field, you know, a, a scrum team or multiple scrum teams yes. a, of analysts or developers to build the AI in the way that we want it to. Um, what's been helpful is we have working with Bold is one, there's trust, right? Like you can see the success rate very quickly. We see the ease of use and um, adding content to the platform and, you know, the, the NL, the NLU is very, very um, reliable, very quickly, right? In the past five months, we've been able to have such a um, great success rate because of the fact that we can ch change and build things rapidly. That's great. Um, and were we to do that, you know, a year and a half ago, we were doing something that was a little bit more manual and yeah. required not only all the work that we're doing, um, but it really did require like a data scientist and a programmer to yeah, help wow. us like um, stitch the, the conversations together. Um, so, you know, for, for me, um, I think what's been helpful is for us to be able to work with a partner that we trust to advance the technology. And we in-house are the experts in our, our field of sex education, and we're working to, you know, push that forward. So that partnership is great where there's trust on both ends. Yes. Um, and instead of having to, you know, spend a lot of cycles on trying to figure out how to build this in-house. I think it's been very helpful to work on the partnership together. Um, and I think that's been, I think what's also really great is no one on our team is particularly technical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a team of doing like two and a half people at this point, but yes. um, you know, we have a content lead, a UX designer and a product person. Yeah. Um, none of us have, you know, all of us analyze the data, which I think is really great. Um, but none of us are actually spending a lot of time on like the mechanics of the the, the development. Yes. Um, so I think what's been great too is with a very small team, we've been able to advance so quickly by using a platform as well. That's awesome. And I think what's really, to me, it's so, so, so many great examples there of like, you have a very focused team. You understood what the problem was you wanted right. to solve or what was the use case you wanted to address. So you were very targeted there. I think you didn't go too broad in the beginning. So you said, hey, let's make some kind of magical moments. Yeah. Um, but let's stay pretty focused. Um, and then you leveraged, you know, a partner like us and even other resources. I know we weren't the only other, you know, partner at mm -hmm. the table. Um, you had some design help and creative help. Um, but you kind of got those right additional folks at the table and it helped you to run really fast and mm -hmm. then also iterate and improve. And to me, it's just such a great example of like, think about, you know, there are companies with more resources that are still struggling and it's like, you can do it if you just kind of, get after it. Right, and I, I think it's a lot around um, the age-old product question of prioritization, yes, right? Yes, totally. <laughs> what is the priority for you? And for us, it was just advancing the mission um, and to be able to do that in a rapid way, um, especially since, as we know, um, that sex education is is varied in each state, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to do it on a nationwide level is really great to see. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so we're here, we're here at Venture Beat Transform. I guess, you know, at this event, what's the things that you've been most excited about or what's, you know, in the last day and a half, what's been the biggest aha for you while you've been here? Yeah, um, I think what's been really great is just the emphasis on ethics yeah, um, and diversity and inclusion. I was just saying this earlier too, um, which I, I think it's great that all of us are kind of acknowledging that AI isn't just standing on its own. It really yeah. needs this human element, right? The human element and the, the technology vary, right? Some require heavy technology and, and very small heavy lifting on the human side. And in other places, it's you know much more and 50-50. I, I would say like um, for Rue, for instance, it's about even. We need the technology as much as we need the human totally. for it to work. Yes. Um, 
And so I think what's been really great is uh, to see the emphasis on the ethics side, on the software, to make sure that we are making very smart decisions about social progress and about being accessible and equal from yes. a software perspective. And then on the human side, I think it's been really great to see how people are thinking about diversity and inclusion in the representation of the humans that are you know, working together to advance AI. Yeah. Um, and so it's social progress that is great to see um, because that's, you know, something we do in a mission-driven organization. I think it's awesome to see in, you know, companies that aren't particularly as mission-driven, they yes. are making it an emphasis and they're um, bringing a lot of importance into that. So I think that's been a great takeaway for me. It's, it's made me feel really, um, really proud of being in technology and really yeah. excited about where tech takes AI because of the thoughtfulness that people are putting into that sort of relationship and pairing of human and software, um, but also just seeing how the software is advancing so rapidly too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was this great graph at the keynote where um, how it only take, it took like a third of the time for someone to um, adopt to AI versus like a phone or the yes, internet. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's also great to see like how quickly this is going to be, and you can see it, right? You can see how AI can be part of any sort of business, any sort of experience, um, from a consumer to like just even internally within an organization. So it's like all of those things have been like very surprising moments um, for me that, that really excite me about AI and the future of it. Yeah, it's fun to come to a conference like this and just to see that energy. And it also is great to get a sense of like kind of where you're, you and your organization and team sit as compared to everybody else. And you're like, wow, here we feel like we're leading in this yeah. area. Well, maybe we're, you know, we can yeah. do a little more there. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's also great that it's not just a technology discussion, but to your point, we're talking about ethics, we're talking about inclusiveness, we're talking about new use cases that expand the, the art of the possible. Right. You know, one thing that's so powerful about AI is that when you do it, you can then kind of repeat the process and you can start to target really specific audiences or groups or, or use cases mm -hmm. that, you know, otherwise to fund people and have people manage it might not be cost effective. Right. Um, or to scale it to where you can have it address the entire country versus a specific city. Yeah. So there's this really unique opportunity to start taking it and really go after specific problems uh, in a more repeatable way. Yeah, and I think what's great too is people are not only talking about it, but there's so many examples of people actually implementing, implementing. These, yeah. these changes yes. and seeing positive outcomes, right? I think that's the other part that is that's more challenging and harder to do. It's yeah. easy to just say, I think that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, lip service to it. Right, yeah. yeah. But to actually put that sort of philosophy into practice and show the like positive outcomes, that's exciting to see. Yeah, that's Truly. awesome. Truly. Totally yeah. agree. Well, wonderful. I've really enjoyed, as, as always, enjoy our <laughs> conversations. Um, Thank you, likewise. You have great energy and it's a wonderful organization and really great the work you guys are doing there. Yeah, likewise. Totally appreciate it. Um, so thank you so much. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, Please uh, look forward to additional uh, live stream sessions from here at VentureView Transform. I'll be uh, live streaming presentations on stage and additional interviews like this. And also feel free to check out the VentureView website for additional information and articles, especially about Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. and Rue. Thank you so much for your attention and joining our live stream.